Good morning, Y254 family. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning. We are so glad and happy and thankful to God to be alive and here yet again in studio to give you the very best of chit chat and of course fantastic music back to back right here on our breakfast show. Of course, we want to say a big thank you to Barry Moses. We do have Hilda Wadidi and the lovely Kalami Val for kicking off at exactly 7 a.m. But uh, my name is Shiko Kaitani and I do want to welcome you to our session of Hello day and uh, today as always it is Tuesday and you know what we do every Tuesday we like to give you tips ideas on how you can um, of course uh, get into that entrepreneurship um, role that you've been you know eyeing or whatever you've been thinking about in terms of business and of course we also love to give you you know a bit of ideas um, in terms of what career path that you probably would like to take and so today we are going a little bit heavy on career talk and this time around I'll, I have to tell you I'm so excited excited um, to actually be discussing women in sports business and this time around I am glad to have a remarkable lady in studio and that's because uh, she has actually been featured on the leader sports list of exceptional people in sports for the year of 2018 uh, of which she's yet to receive a global recognition as a listed recipient of a leaders sports award and so uh, with that I would like to welcome Cynthia uh, Mombo who is the CEO of Sports Connect Africa with us to talk to us a little bit about what it's like to be in her line. Karibu sana. Thank you. First of all, high five. Congratulations. <laughs> and another one for you. Thank you. Okay. And another one for Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of forever <laughs> by the way just so you know cynthia is the only african on this list okay and trust me this platform is huge it's an international platform she is the only african who has been listed and not only is she representing Wakanda, she's of course definitely raising the Kenyan flag high. And so I want to say congratulations. Thank you very much. How does it feel to actually be part of this list? I can't scream on TV. <laughs> Please do, no, go ahead. Here, here, here we are open. No, I'm really, really, really humbled by this and really excited. I mean, it's been years and years of putting in time and putting in work mm. uh, and just, you know, kind of walking on that journey. I never honestly expected this. Yeah. Um, I got, I got the call when I was in um, Kogelo mm -hmm. and Obama had just spoken so I was like ha, this guy came with all the gifts for real yes. <laughs> And yeah. you just happened to be visiting or were you no, working? No, I was working there. So okay. we put up the volleyball and netball pitch uh, at um, the Sautiku Foundation. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we'll be working together with them on basketball programs moving mm. forward. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you're no stranger to TV as well as Y254 because yes. you've been here on the sports show. I know you're very good friends with Max Wasike and Robert Osora and, of course, our, our producer, Fadili. Mm -hmm. uh, but for those who are actually seeing Cynthia, the beautiful Cynthia for the first time on screen, maybe you can give us a background about what Sports Connect Africa is all about. So Sports Connect Africa is um, is a sports consultancy. Yeah. Uh, and when I say sports consultancy, it literally is that. It means that we solve sports problems. So, mm. you know, when it comes to setting up s sports events and we would find solutions for that, yeah. when it comes to operations, sports mm. operations, and I need to explain what sports operations is. So say you have a football league and you need to run the, yeah. the fixtures, you mm -hmm. need to have, a, you know, coordinators running mm -hmm. the teams, you know, how the teams need to look like and yeah. all of that. So we run that when it comes to sports marketing, when it comes to digital yeah. uh, engagement, but we focus purely on sports. We, yeah. we feel that that, that is you know where our strength lies mm -hmm. um, and, and and that's what Sports Connect Africa about, is about it's about creating solutions for yeah. sports problems and when did it actually you know hit you or when did that spark come and you're like you know what actually I could help out the sports industry so I've been in sports for as long as I can remember yeah um, I was born in an environment where sports was pretty big my yeah. parents both played um, I think my mom played volleyball uh, netball my dad played soccer yeah. um, but I had a very uh, interesting upbringing because I grew up with Benjamin Aimba and I always mm. bring up this story because he's really one of those guys that I look up to when it comes yeah. to you know sports and the love for sport yeah. um, when we were kids he would make us run mm. him and a friend of ours called uh, Philip Monesi and Sally and, and Sally and they would make us and all these guys come from very sporty families by yeah, the way yeah. uh, so they they're about maybe eight years uh, older than me and what they would do is they would go to school um, have their races come back make the, those of us who are about the same age their younger brothers yeah, and sisters they'd yeah. make us run and I'd always win 
<laughs> I would always win. Yeah. So I learned how to win it alone, you know. And, yeah. and but then the value of that is not necessarily me winning. Mm. It was that recognition after I won. Mm. I would always be given a medal. Yeah. You know, the uh, or a sweet. Uh, yeah. Of course, I had to give back their medals. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but then yeah. we would emulate what they would do and that kind of caught on me when I was very very young I, I really just wanted to be in that space yeah. forever mm. uh, so I went into high school and I you know I, I got onto a basketball court the first time I, I remember the coach insisting that yeah. I should play hockey I couldn't deal and with and you were hockey. like no okay I, the first day someone broke a tooth I said this one <laughs> not for me okay, I, I went into lot, yeah. yeah I went into sprinting and yeah. and and that worked for me mm -hmm. uh, but one time I went onto the basketball court I remember we used to watch on KBC by the way yeah um, NBA actually yes. you know on Sundays yes. at 4 p.m. <laughs> I think anyone who's around my age will always remember oh, that of course, yeah. you know and and I, I caught a ball and I threw the ball into the net and it went in fast first time I touched a basketball I said so ah, this is the sport for this me. is it for me okay they okay. kick me out of the basketball court yeah because oh I'm a fresher I'm a fast yeah. former mm -hmm. you can't until second time I was like dude you I can run. Yeah. I can run faster than everyone in your team. <laughs> I learn how to play the game. Yeah, and yeah. I've always been like that when yeah. it comes to sports. I always just want to be in there. Mm. So I finished uh, high school, went into, um, I got a scholarship at USIU, which yeah. uh, I didn't finish. It's a story for another day. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I always mention this because I know I'm talking to young people. Yeah. And I want them to understand that school is very important. Mm -hmm. But if you do fail, get up. You know, get yeah, up, and yeah. that was a failure point for me. Yeah. In fact, it was a, it was one of those things that really got me saying, okay, I don't want to do what I'm doing in uni. Right. I okay. want to get into sport 100%. Okay. Um, and so, uh, played basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, got uh, left USIU, went to KU. Yeah. Played basketball at uh, KU and did my diploma in business management. Um, from there, I got an internship at uh, Firestone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and within this period, I played at NSSF. I played at, mm. uh, of course, USIU, mm. KU. Mm -hmm. and then I went to Sprite Storms. And at Sprite Storms, I met a friend of mine called Stella. And I pester her every day. I need, I need. I never, yeah. I never ask for a job. I yeah. always ask for an opportunity to grow to because grow. a job could be anything. Okay. You know, and I, an opportunity to learn. Yeah. So yeah. is it there where you actually realize that okay, this is the foundation of where Sports Connect came out? Exactly. Uh, so yeah. you know, I, I'm, I, I love multitasking. So yeah. I was playing basketball. I was in school. Uh, I was doing CIM and and you know after going back to school this time I was very yeah. serious I was top student in Kenya yeah. very excited about that right. yeah. um, and then uh, I was working so I got a I got an internship at uh, at Firestone at mm -hmm. the time so mm -hmm. that's uh, Samira Africa yeah. and I got an internship at uh, Samira Africa and that kind of got me thinking you know w what more can I do with this so we set up a basketball team there yeah. but when I was uh, growing up I remember putting drawing something saying that I'll play in the NBA oh lord talk about yeah. dreams <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, well, that didn't happen. And yeah. I, I, um, what got me into leadership in mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. is at that time when I was at Firestone, uh, Samir Africa, um, there was the basketball fraternity was constantly, you know, fighting each other. People making noise and saying, oh, yeah. we don't have this, we don't have that. And I, and I shared a solution. I said, well, why are you guys fighting? I've never seen a strategic plan. I've never seen an execution plan from, from and that's basketball. What, yeah. So I was co-opted into the federation. I was told, okay, you have solutions. Come here. I was okay. 25. Wow. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you know, one of the things that I like talking to you, Cynthia, about is your story. And, you know, maybe you could briefly tell us what you were doing before you got into sports management or sports business. Because Great. I think that is probably one of the most touching things I had. Which one? The one I sold chapels. <laughs> yes, that one. I cannot believe till this day. Well, I have an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, I don't like to rely too much on everybody to support me. I've got fantastic parents. I cannot be where I am today without my parents. Yes. Um, but I've always wanted to do something extra. Yes. So... Uh, when I got the internship yeah. at uh, Firestone, I wasn't paid. In fact, I wasn't paid for a year. I remember my mom looking at me and telling me, are you insane? Preach. You need, <laughs> yes. You need to get a life. Yeah. I've so. not paid full fees. All okay. She's probably watching. So let me, let me yeah. cut her some slack. But anyway, I, and I understand where that's coming from. I'm a mother now. So I yeah. know that your parents all only want the best for you. Okay. okay. Um, so I'd wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. And make chapatis. 
to go and sell yes at the factory i sat there i'm a salesman i mean i was in sales i was put into <laughs> sales and so i used to sit there and look at all these like two thousand guys who'd come in um and on the on the sales side you know yeah. that was the dispatch side so we we had about maybe five six hundred of mm. them uh, at any given time in the morning or they're about yeah and every morning I used to sit and watch them and they'd go to buy chapels. Yeah. Kibanda. Yeah. I said, like, tell me, how much are they buying these chapels for? Uh, 15 bob, 20 bob. Actually, at that time, they were 10 bob. I said, but if I, I can make do them. That. Yeah. If I, if I wake up and, and I make really good chapels. So okay. I, guys, I'll bring you guys chapels. <laughs> so yeah, that's the first thing you should have brought here. We're into Konanja. It's breakfast. It's 7 a.m. I mean, we're up no, at no, no. 4. You should have come with chapels. 4 a.m. Yeah. Make chapatis. Yeah. At 8 a.m., I'm in the office. Uh, at 8.15, I had zero chapatis. So wow. I'd make, m I'd get up, make about 100 chapels every morning. What? Yes. That is, oh my God. That's like, insane. Let me tell you, you have to have a heart to do that kind of stuff. Well, you have to have a heart to be in business. And yes. that was my first touch of business. And that's what really kind of taught me that, you know, yeah. you need input to get output. Right. You need to put in time. You need to yeah. put in. And, you, it, you know, I always say this. Whenever we were in a bank, you know, when you walk into a bank mm -hmm. and somebody brings in half a million yeah. and they sold tomatoes and yeah. you bring in half a million and you have this blue collar, white collar job, whatever yeah. you want to call it. When the bank receives that money, it's half a million. Eh? Then yeah. It doesn't know you, you came with this. So reason. you yeah. put in the work, put in yeah. the time, just you believe in your actions and, and you know, give your best whenever whenever it's it is true. you want to do something and you know even as we discuss um uh, you know um this as we have this career talk and we talk about entrepreneurship every tuesday uh we always like to give you know throw quotes and you know discuss those inspirational motivational speakers out there and td jakes if you watch this show you know for a fact how much i love that guy and he always talks about that success um is actually all about sacrifice so you've got to sacrifice in order to be successful and i think that's that's where it started off for you i mean the exactly. 4 a.m yeah it's not easy no making 100 chapatis so that in four hours you're actually seated to do a job that you're not being paid for yes <laughs> okay yeah. so that, that that's what so i had up. to find my yeah. my way to get to the office yeah but i enjoyed what i was doing at that time i don't know how to do things halfway okay i was an intern i remember i was given yeah. an opportunity to sell tires my my phone was put on you know mm. the way they put newspaper and they're yeah. like sale sale yeah. sale and they yeah. put all these tires anyone who called me came your so number many of was them, in the daily yes oh my the people who many of them came to say i want to meet that girl who i talked to oh my and would God. come and they'd live with tires yeah so i i really really just put in my heart and love whenever i want you know put in my heart into something do it a hundred and ninety percent don't give it quarter okay yeah um now you know there's the general discussion that by the way um it's not really viable to get into sports and sports business because being a sportsman or sports um, a woman in this country, in Africa generally, is just, it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. You talk to rugby players, you talk to basketball players, you have to have a proper job and then the sports business or sports whatever it is has to be on the side. So to many people, it's not lucrative. It doesn't even make sense to go into it full time. Why would you take such a chance? Because I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean- I like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of research. Yeah. Uh, and yes, it's absolutely difficult. Yeah. People don't get what I'm doing. Every time I have to get in somewhere, I have to educate yeah. first uh, and say, look, um, if, if we go to Arsenal, which is my team, and yeah. I saw they beat someone 5 1. So <laughs> we go yeah. to Arsenal. Yeah. When you look at Arsenal, you look at a, v a venue. Yeah. That's infrastructure that they mm. own. They make money when guys come in. Yeah. That's you know that's yeah. sports business there's merchandise there's merchandise yeah. that's sports business mm -hmm. there's um, broadcast that yeah. is sports business mm -hmm. they have uh, a sponsor on their shirt yeah first they sell the shirt which is merchandise but mm -hmm. then they have a sponsor on their shirt right that is income for them yeah you know then they have uh, income that comes from the fa because mm -hmm. of you know so many other whatever right a and but then they have people who work behind the scenes a finance guy they have an account and people guy don't see they that. have a sales guy yeah. they have you know they have somebody they yeah. The product is the game, mm. the team, the mm. brand mm. arsenal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have, they've broken down their product to so many different things. Right. They have, um, you know, when you go to uh, their training session, yeah. they have a partner for training. 
So the kit that they wear for training is not the, the one that they wear. Wow. During, yes. There's so much that and goes into it. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. all of that has been broken down. And yeah. then you look at individuals, mm -hmm. the athletes. Yeah. They're brands in themselves. Mm. So you have Ronaldo. He's just moved to Juventus. That, that, uh, the that exchange. Yes, that exchange. Yeah is money for the Arsenal, team, yeah. for the team yeah. but for for not for Arsenal but for the team that he left yes. uh, um, Real Madrid yeah. but when you look at him as an individual what mm -hmm. has he made mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then you look at his endorsements so there's so much around sports and sports business yeah. and when I sat down I said okay why aren't we doing this well in Africa mm -hmm. we do have pockets and I don't want to say that we're not doing it yeah. but then we've not been able to understand the value yes. the value proposition the yeah. the opportunities mm -hmm. that are there within sports and, and I said I'm going to be in it as mm -hmm. early as possible yes. uh, 10 years from now I'm yeah. the only person people are coming to me really want sports <laughs> That's by the, the way, you, 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 really, you truly <laughs> are a pioneer in what you're doing. I think I've only met probably two of you, yeah. you know. There, there are a couple of us. Uh, there, yeah. there are those guys who are doing stuff on the ground. They're okay. there and I respect them heavily yeah. because it's not an easy business. It's what, not easy. What would you say is the biggest challenge working with athletes in this country? Mm, we want to emulate everybody else in the West and we're African. We have to be authentic. Okay. I think when when our athletes go out there, they they want to insist on talking in in uh, English, uh, talking Kalenjin. They, those <laughs> white people out there, yeah. whatever out there, they will bring the media out there. Yeah. They will bring somebody to translate. So their their expectations are a bit too high. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, there's nothing mm. wrong with having high expectations. Mm. I'm an athlete. Mm. You must have exceptional expectations otherwise yeah. you'll be average mm -hmm. you know a and I, I think the, the i don't think our athletes necessarily have a problem i think the system has an issue we have to look at you know holistically what sports is yeah we need to invest behind uh, infrastructure yeah uh, and behind capacity so mm. if you do not have enough coaches it doesn't matter how much talent you have because, because your talent yeah. is not going to be able to compete if you don't have enough referees or right. you know for whatever sport yeah if you don't have enough of investment behind that okay. for me the big the big takeouts mm. is infrastructure and capacity building if mm. you don't have um you know if you if you if you don't put in investment behind those two areas yeah. and have a t time period yeah. where you you say you know you if you're expecting returns putting in money in sport and expecting returns next year is uh, practically impossible mm. it's like any other business right. you would probably expect returns in three four years mm -hmm. five years mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's that's the way I look at it that okay. it's not the athletes I don't think our athletes necessarily have a problem it's a system, uh, it's a system. It's a system. we system. need to structure the system in okay. such a way that it can be able to support the athletes yeah. can be able to support business can yeah. be able to support partners sponsors mm -hmm. everybody okay uh, remember 22162 is that SMS number if you do want to contribute to our ongoing discussions, if you do have any comments or questions even for Cynthia, uh, please do let us know. We would love to hear from you and I'm going to ask my director to tell me if we've got anything that's coming through on our social media platforms or that SMS number 22162. Uh, Cynthia, you talked about being crazy and I, <laughs> and I believe you're crazy enough to actually handle the pressure that comes with doing what you do. I would really love, because as you can see, the caption is women in sports business. Mm -hmm. I really want to understand, um, you know, some of the challenges that you have gone through as a woman in this business. When you think back in hindsight, like, what have you been up against? Mm, so I've been to tons of interviews yeah. and every single time I they go into an interview you, yeah. that question comes yeah. so for me it's fascinating because I grew up with boys only so I have five brothers four mm -hmm. brothers and I, uh, I'm the only girl yeah um, I've always been treated as one of the kids yes. not one of special kids yeah. I mean um, <laughs> but everywhere I go 90% of the time I always find myself in a boardroom yeah. as the only woman Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I take my seat because I need to be there. Yes. Uh, I have, I deserve to be there. And so I don't go there fighting. I go there because I believe in relationships. I go there as w w whichever environment that I get into. Uh, it's, it's very, it's often that, you know, you're told you're, you're a woman and I say, but I breathe Yeah. oxygen. Yeah. Like I you breathe oxygen. <laughs> I have two hands. I have, I have a mind. I went to yeah, school. Yeah. I, I have. I, I have ideas that I would like to put on the table. Yeah. So give me a chance. Mm. And, and if you're, they you're don't work, you can kick me out because I'm a woman. But if they do work, accept me because I'm a human being. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, I think I think you're not there um, as a woman. You're there as the CEO. I'm there. As the I'm the I'm an individual. Yeah. And that's why I had to bring up the situation where I was born with, with five four boys. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, I I 
I don't want to say that women want to use the excuse because yeah. it's a man's world. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest about it. Just the other day, yeah. um, Sekafa Women's Championship ended. The, the winners were getting $2,500. I mean, really, something yeah. like that. Mm. That's uh, mm. for women. Mm. What are you saying? And mm. men go home with uh, millions? Yeah. $2,500 is what, 250,000 yeah. shillings yeah. for a team? Oh, so what, that's crazy. That yeah. can't even buy two, three tickets for players. <laughs> so what are you saying? Yeah. That you women are not worth it, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And so w there is, you know, the idea of affirmative action. I also want to say that I'm a mother of a boy. Yeah. So I want, I, I really am very um, particular about this issue because yeah. I realize now that there's so much going into the girl child yeah. that we are forgetting the boy child. The boy child. So oh for God, me, don't it's the boy. <laughs> yeah, boy child. Yes, yeah, boy uh, child. But then also when yeah. we go online, yeah. it's a it's a whole different story. Yeah. But to be honest, mm -hmm. I think that you know there's a generational issue that yeah. uh, needs to be discussed. Life has changed. Let's talk about the child. Let's empower that child, okay. whether it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. Let's empower children so that they can be able to live in a life that is fair for all of them. Okay. Yeah, okay. and, and, and I'm, I'm very passionate about this because okay. uh, I stand up and believe. Yeah. Uh, many times, uh, you know, for a woman, you will need to climb seven steps um, to be at the same level. Mm -hmm. Climb the seven steps. Do and it. when, yes, yeah. and, and if a guy needs to climb one, let him climb one. But when you get to that point where you're at the same level, mm -hmm. do and do it so well. And they say, you know what, it doesn't matter that she's a woman. She's putting in her time she's putting in her work yeah uh, and she's doing what she's got to do okay. but it's a man's world we just have to swim in there and and, and deliver yeah okay all right so um real quick because i understand we've got about five more minutes to go mm -hmm. um how about you tell us what your organization is doing to actually support and build um talent in the sports industry here in kenya and you know maybe those who are watching mm -hmm. could actually say, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe there's something I can do with Sports Connect Africa. Mm, so two yeah. things. Yeah. One is um, we have an internship program. So we just started recently. Yeah. Uh, we've taken in our first interns from Nairobi International School. Oh, okay. And our focus is not uh, guys who are from uni. Mm -hmm. I would like to be able to influence 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, guys yeah. who are still in high school. Mm -hmm. I think our school system does not necessarily support that kind of um, yeah. uh, structure. Mm -hmm. I think kids need to get into um, offices mm -hmm. and get to, yeah. to understand how s business yeah. you know, works. They might not do the work, but just being there in that environment kind of opens their minds okay. to the opportunities Great. and then yeah. um and then we run what we call the vicapo elite basketball camp mm -hmm. uh, and it's about life skills and basketball development so we offer training uh holiday season to young athletes uh, yeah. young athletes mm -hmm. uh on basketball uh, development um mm -hmm. and we and and we have sessions for life skills okay yeah okay great uh so for those who are watching and probably do want to understand more and feel that by the way um uh, sports connect africa could be the place you know for them how can they actually reach you or just interact with you we are young so we're digital well, <laughs> and by the way you know i always find it strange when people come and say oh, you know i'm not on facebook i'm like you're on y254 you, you have to be online kidding? <laughs> i was on facebook when facebook opened i'm not kidding <laughs> um so yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're on facebook sports okay. connect africa where mm. you'll find us on instagram with the vikapu yeah. elite basketball okay and then, uh, you know, you can get us on our number plus uh, mm. two five four seven seven two yeah. nine one three six three seven, mm -hmm. and on email sports at sportsconnectafrica dot com. Okay, sports yeah. at sportsconnectafrica, pretty easy. Yeah, sports at sportsconnectafrica dot com. Okay. So write okay. to us. Yeah. you know, send us your ideas and mm -hmm. send us your your CVs. Uh, we're not employing at the moment. Yeah, but I always love to have an opportunity to speak to young people and just get to mm -hmm. empower them. I love to mentor. So if I can be able to be a mentor to the young guys who are watching. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't happen every other day so guys you need to understand that we're in business so we're not always available yeah. but if you write to me an email yeah. uh, if you send us a text we'll always get back to you uh, okay. we, d we always prepare some time to get back to the to the young ones okay yeah. uh, we've just copy pasted uh, a, a text here or rather a message uh, that's coming on Twitter uh, and this one is from at Anne she and um, uh, she talks about have you had issues um, uh, concerning relationships due to your work uh, which is I, I like that <laughs> for women in sports or in a in a very male dominated field has that actually affected your relationship? So do guys can tell me? Yeah. Uh, unless I'm not human, but uh, <laughs> um, I think I always you know set the 
the the record straight whenever yeah. i get into some place there's business and then there's personal stuff and so if you respect yourself people will respect you yeah. so um I, I i i never really go out there expecting for people to kind of hit on me or whatever yeah. i'm very professional with the way i take my work yeah uh and if uh, if somebody hits on me I, i'll tell them what's your interest is it work is it business if it's not business we can talk after work yeah but if it's business let's focus on business you have to stand up you have to stand your ground and just you know be be true to yourself yeah uh, because those will come unless mm -hmm. unless you're really a bad person people are not going to cut you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's that's like that's that. kind of weird okay but expect anything yeah what's important is your reaction to things you okay. know uh, okay. you have the power to react okay and how you react is what's important fantastic yeah. okay so uh thank you so much uh to you Anne, for getting in touch with us through twitter um i can still see a few more that are going to be streaming in but we'll definitely share them directly with cynthia uh but not to worry and of course uh continue to interact with us uh on y254 tv on instagram on facebook y254 channel on twitter and 22162 is that sms number if you still have any more questions or in any comments you do have concerning this interview as we discuss women in sports all right so it's a about that time where we say Kwa Harry, we cannot uh, congratulate Cynthia enough uh, for you know being a listed recipient for the awards that are coming up. It's going to be when in October. It's going to be in October. October in what? October 9th okay. in London. In London. Yes. Go, Absolutely go, excited. Go, ah. go, go, go. All right, so Thank congratulations. You. She's definitely going to be receiving a Leader Sports Award, um, a courtesy of a Leader Sports. And uh, remember, this is a very, this is a global, global recognition for Cynthia. And so we're so very proud of her. Uh, so you. Cynthia Mumbo, thank you so much, Mumbo, uh, CEO for Sports Connect Africa Institute, with us discussing women in sports business. On behalf of the Breakfast Crew, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.